Who is Donald Trump? Donald John Trump Sr., born June 14, 1946, is an American business magnate, investor, socialite, author, and television personality. He is a candidate for the President of the United States in the 2016 presidential election. He is the chairman and president of the Trump Organization and the founder of Trump Entertainment Resorts. Trump's career, branding efforts, lifestyle, and outspoken manner have helped make him a celebrity, a status amplified by the success of his NBC reality show, The Apprentice. A native of New York City, he is the son of Fred Trump. He was strongly influenced by his father in choosing a career in real estate development. Trump worked for his father's firm, Elizabeth Trump and Son, while attending the Wharton School of the University of Pennsylvania and joined the company in 1968 upon graduation. In 1971, he was given control of the company and renamed it the Trump Organization. He is a major figure in real estate and a celebrity for his prominent media exposures. On June 16, 2015, Trump announced his candidacy for president in the 2016 election, seeking the nomination of the Republican Party. His campaign has consistently drawn intense media coverage. Since July 2015, he has consistently been the front-runner in public opinion polls for the Republican Party nomination and frequently touts his high poll numbers. Trump has run for president of the United States on two occasions. In 2000, he ran an exploratory campaign and won two Reform Party primaries. In June 2015, Trump announced his candidacy for president in the 2016 election, and his campaign for the Republican Party drew more media coverage than all of the Republican rivals combined. In addition, free media coverage and campaign self-financing allowed him to eschew the super PAC model. Trump has consistently been the front-runner in public opinion polls for the Republican Party nomination, running on a populist platform that appeals to the concerns of working-class voters who feel displaced by job losses and changes to America's ethnic and religious demographics. Trump's politically incorrect, anti-illegal immigration politics, which also concentrated on terrorism and national security concerns, brought him support among working-class voters as well as widespread opposition from Hispanics, Muslims, business leaders, Democrats, and other Republicans. Part 1. Early Life Donald John Trump was born on June 14, 1946, in the New York City borough of Queens. He is the fourth of five children to Mary Ann, 1912-2000, a homemaker and philanthropist, and Fred Trump, 1905-1999, who worked as a real estate developer. His mother was born at Tong on the Scottish island of Lewis. In 1930, Aged 18, she visited the United States and met Fred Trump. They were married in 1936 and settled in Jamaica Estates, Queens, and Fred Trump eventually became one of the city's biggest real estate developers. Trump has one brother, Robert, born in 1948, and two sisters, Marianne, born 1937, and Elizabeth, born 1942. Marianne is a United States federal judge on senior status for the United States Court of Appeals for the Third Circuit. Another brother, Fred Jr., 1938-1981, died of complications from alcoholism. Trump's paternal grandparents, Elizabeth and Frederick Trump, were immigrants who moved to the United States from Germany in 1885. Frederick worked as a successful Klondike Gold Rush restaurateur. His family surname was originally Drumpf, but this was changed to Trump in the 17th century. In Trump's 1987 book, The Art of the Deal, he incorrectly states that Frederick Trump was of Swedish origin, an assertion that Fred Trump had made for many years. Trump later acknowledged his German ancestry and served as Grand Marshal of the 1999 German-American Steuben Parade in New York City. The family had a two-story mock Tudor revival home on Warham Place in Jamaica Estates, where Trump lived while attending the Kew Forest School. At Kew Forest, Fred Trump served as a member of the Board of Trustees. In 1983, Fred told an interviewer that Donald was a pretty rough fellow when he was small, prompting him to enroll Donald in the New York Military Academy, NYMA. Trump finished eighth grade and high school at NYMA. 
During his senior year, Trump participated in marching drills and wore a uniform, attaining the highest rank of cadet, first captain. In 2015, he told a biographer that NYMA gave him more training militarily than a lot of guys that go into the military. Trump attended Fordham University for two years. He entered the Wharton School of Business at the University of Pennsylvania, as Wharton then offered one of the few real estate studies departments in U.S. academia. While there, he worked at his father's company, Elizabeth Trump and Son. Trump graduated from Wharton in 1968 with a bachelor's degree in economics. Trump was eligible for the draft lottery during the Vietnam War. I actually got lucky because I had a very high draft number, he told WNYW in 2011. Selective service records retrieved by the smoking gun website from the National Archives show that although Trump did eventually receive a high selective service lottery number in 1969, he was not drafted earlier because of four student deferments while attending college and after receiving a medical deferment obtained in 1968 after his college graduation, prior to the lottery being initiated. Trump was deemed fit for service after a military medical examination in 1966 and was briefly classified as 1A by a local draft board shortly before his 1968 medical disqualification. Trump attributed his medical deferment to heel spurs in both feet, according to a 2015 biographer. Part 2. Business Career When Trump graduated from college, he was worth about $200,000. He began his career at his father's real estate company, Elizabeth Trump & Son, which focused on middle-class rental housing in the New York City boroughs of Brooklyn, Queens, and Staten Island. During his undergraduate study, one of Trump's first projects was the revitalization of the foreclosed Swifton Village apartment complex in Cincinnati, Ohio, which his father had purchased for $5.7 million in 1962. Fred and Donald Trump became involved in the project, and, with a $500,000 investment, turned the 1,200-unit complex's occupancy rate from 34% to 100%. Trump oversaw the company's 14,000 apartments across Brooklyn, Queens, and Staten Island. In 1972, the Trump Organization sold Swifton Village for $6.75 million. In 1971, Trump moved to Manhattan where he became involved in larger construction projects and used attractive architectural design to win public recognition. Trump initially came to public attention in 1973 when he was accused by the Justice Department of violations of the Fair Housing Act in the operation of 39 buildings. Trump, in turn, accused the Justice Department of targeting his company because it was a large one and in order to force it to rent to welfare recipients. Trump settled the charges in 1975, saying he was satisfied that the agreement did not compel the Trump Organization to accept persons on welfare as tenants, unless as qualified as any other tenant. Trump had an option to buy and made plans to develop Penn Central Transportation Company property that was in bankruptcy. This included the 60th Street Rail Yard on the Hudson River, later developed as Riverside South, as well as the land around the Grand Central Terminal, for which he paid $60 million with no money down. Later, with the help of a 40-year tax abatement from the New York City government, he turned the bankrupt Commodore Hotel next to Grand Central into the Grand Hyatt and created the Trump Organization. Trump promoted Penn Central's 30th Street Rail Yard as a site for New York City's planned Jacob K. Javits Convention Center, Trump estimated his company could have completed the project for $110 million, but while the city chose his site, it rejected his offer and Trump received a broker's fee on the sale of the property instead. Repairs on Woolman Rink in Central Park, built in 1955, were started in 1980 with an expected two-and-a-half-year construction schedule, but were not completed by 1986. Trump took over the management of the project without the city needing to pay anything and completed it in three months for $1.95 million, which was $750,000 less than the initial budget. In 1988, Trump acquired the Taj Mahal Casino in a transaction with Merv Griffin and Resorts International, which led to mounting debt, and by 1989, Trump was unable to meet loan payments. 
Although he shored up his business with additional loans and postponed interest payments, by 1991, increasing debt brought Trump to business bankruptcy. Banks and bondholders had lost hundreds of millions of dollars, but opted to restructure the debt. The Taj Mahal emerged from bankruptcy on October 5, 1991, with Trump ceding 50% ownership in the casino to the original bondholders in exchange for lowered interest rates on the debt and more time to pay it off. He also sold his financially challenged Trump shuttle airline and his 282-foot mega-yacht, the Trump Princess. The late 1990s saw a resurgence in Trump's financial situation. The will of Trump's father, who died in 1999, divided an estate estimated at $250 to $300 million equally among his four surviving children. In 2001, Donald Trump completed Trump World Tower, a 72-story residential tower across from the United Nations headquarters. Also, he began construction on Trump Place, a multi-building development along the Hudson River. Trump owns commercial space in Trump International Hotel and Tower, a 44-story mixed-use hotel and condominium tower on Columbus Circle. In total, Trump owns several million square feet of prime Manhattan real estate. In 2015, Forbes estimated Trump's net worth at $4 billion. In June 2015, Business Insider published a June 30, 2014 financial statement supplied by Trump. The statement reflects his net worth as $8.7 billion. Of that amount, $3.3 billion is represented by real estate licensing deals, brand and branded developments, described by Business Insider as basically implying that Trump values his character at $3.3 billion. Part 3. Business Ventures and Investments Golf The Trump Organization operates many golf courses and resorts in the U.S. and around the world. On February 11, 2014, it was announced that Trump had purchased Dunbeg Golf Club in the Republic of Ireland. It was confirmed that the club would be renamed Trump International Golf Links Ireland. In 2006, Trump bought the Meany Estate and Balmedy Aberdeenshire, Scotland, creating a highly contentious golf resort against the wishes of local residents on an area designated as a site of special scientific interest. You've Been Trumped is a 2011 independent documentary by British filmmaker Anthony Baxter, which chronicles the golf resort's construction and the subsequent struggles between the locals and Donald Trump. Despite Trump's promises of 6,000 jobs, by his own admission a decade later, the Scotland golf course only materialized 200 jobs. Branding and Licensing Trump has marketed his name on a large number of products and services, achieving mixed success doing so. Many of his external entrepreneurial and investment ventures include Trump Financial, a mortgage firm, Trump Sales and Leasing, residential sales, Trump International Realty, a residential and commercial real estate brokerage firm, the Trump Entrepreneur Initiative, a for-profit business education company, Trump Restaurants, located in Trump Tower, Go Trump, an online travel search engine, Select by Trump, a line of coffee drinks, Trump Drinks, an energy drink for the Israeli and Palestinian markets, Donald J. Trump Signature Collection, a line of menswear, men's accessories, and watches, Donald Trump, the fragrance, Success by Donald Trump, a second fragrance launched in March 2012, Trump Ice Bottled Water, the former Trump Magazine, Trump Golf, Trump Chocolate, Trump Home, Home Furnishings, Trump Productions, a television production company, Trump Institute, Trump, The Game, a 1989 board game, Donald Trump's Real Estate Tycoon, a business simulation video game, Trump Books, Trump Model Management, Trump Shuttle, Trump Mortgage, Trump Vodka, Trump Steakhouse, and Trump Steaks. In addition, Trump reportedly receives $1.5 million for each one-hour presentation he does for the Learning Annex. In 2011, Forbes financial experts estimated the value of the Trump brand at $200 million. Trump disputes this valuation, saying that his brand is worth about $3 billion. Many developers pay Trump to market their properties and to be the public face for their projects. For that reason, Trump does not own many of the buildings that display his name. 
According to Forbes, this portion of Trump's empire, actually run by his children, is by far his most valuable, having a $562 million valuation. Investments A small portion of Trump's fortune are held in assets outside his holdings in the Trump Organization, most of which are concentrated in the financial market. In 2011, Trump made a rare foray into the stock market after being disappointed with the depressed American real estate market and facing poor returns on bank deposits. He stated that he wasn't a stock market person, but he also stated that prime real estate at good prices is hard to get. Among the stocks Trump purchased, he stated he bought stock in Bank of America, Citigroup, Caterpillar Incorporated, Intel, Johnson & Johnson, and Procter & Gamble. In December 2012, Trump revealed that he also added shares of Facebook to his stock portfolio. Trump also has $9 million invested in hedge funds. He earned $6.7 million from selling shares in Bank of America and an additional $3.9 million from selling shares in Facebook in 2014. Sports In 1983, Trump purchased the New Jersey Generals for the inaugural season of the United States Football League, or USFL. The Generals hired former New York Jets head coach Walt Michaels. Prior to the inaugural season, Trump sold the franchise to Oklahoma oil magnate J. Walter Duncan. Prior to the 1984 season, Duncan sold the team back to Trump. The USFL planned to play its 1986 schedule in the fall, directly opposite the National Football League, or NFL, thanks mostly to Trump's strong advocacy of direct competition with the older, established league. Two years earlier, Trump sold most of his fellow owners on a move to the fall by arguing that it would eventually force a merger with the NFL, in which the owners of any USFL teams included in a merger would see their investments more than double. The 1986 season was canceled after the USFL won a minimal verdict in an antitrust lawsuit against the NFL. The league folded soon afterward. Beauty Pageants from 1996 until 2015, when he sold his interests to William Morris Endeavor, Trump owned part or all of the Miss Universe, Miss USA, and Miss Teen USA beauty pageants. Among the most recognized beauty pageants in the world, the Miss Universe pageant was founded in 1952 by the California clothing company Pacific Mills. In 2015, NBC and Univision both ended their business relationships with the Miss Universe organization after Trump's presidential campaign kickoff speech on June 16th, in which he stated, The U.S. has become a dumping ground for everybody else's problems. Thank you. It's true. And these are the best and the finest. When Mexico sends its people, they're not sending their best. They're not sending you. They're not sending you. They're sending people that have lots of problems, and they're bringing those problems with us. They're bringing drugs. They're bringing crime. They're rapists, and some, I assume, are good people. Trump subsequently filed a $500 million lawsuit against Univision, alleging a breach of contract and defamation. Part 4. Entertainment Media In the media, Trump is a two-time Emmy Award-nominated personality, and has made appearances as a caricatured version of himself in television series and films. For example, Home Alone 2, Lost in New York, The Nanny, The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, Days of Our Lives, and Wall Street, Money Never Sleeps. He has been the subject of comedians, flash cartoon artists, and online caricature artists. Trump also had his own daily talk radio program called Trumped from 2004 to 2008. Trump is also a member of the Screen Actors Guild and receives an annual pension of more than $110,000 every year. In March 2011, Trump was the subject of a Comedy Central roast. On August 5, 2015, a documentary about Trump in the 1980s and 1990s appeared online called What's the Deal? The Apprentice In 2003, Trump became the executive producer and host of the NBC reality show The Apprentice, in which a group of competitors battled for a high-level management job in one of Trump's commercial enterprises. Contestants were successively fired and eliminated from the game. In 2004, Trump filed a trademark application for the catchphrase, You're Fired. In the first year of the show, Trump earned $50,000 per episode, roughly $700,000 for the first season. 
but following the show's initial success, he was paid a reported $3 million per episode, making him one of the highest-paid TV personalities. In July 2015, Trump reported in his personal financial disclosure statement with the Federal Election Commission that NBC Universal had paid him $213 million for his 14 seasons of hosting the show. In 2007, Trump received a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame for his contribution to television in The Apprentice. On February 16, 2015, NBC announced that they would be renewing The Apprentice for a 15th season. On June 29th, after widespread negative reaction stemming from Trump's campaign announcement speech, NBC released a statement saying, Due to the recent derogatory statements by Donald Trump regarding immigrants, NBC Universal is ending its business relationship with Mr. Trump, apparently ending Trump's role in The Apprentice. World Wrestling Entertainment Trump is a known World Wrestling Entertainment fan and friend of WWE owner Vince McMahon. He has hosted two WrestleMania events in the Trump Plaza and has been an active participant in several of the shows. Trump was inducted into the celebrity wing of the WWE Hall of Fame in 2013 at Madison Square Garden for his contributions to the promotion. Part 5. Politics Trump has described his political leanings and positions in various, sometimes contradictory ways over time. Politico has described his positions as eclectic, improvisational, and often contradictory. Specifically, he has changed his positions on taxing the wealthy, abortion rights, and health care. Political Affiliations A 2011 report by the Center for Responsive Politics showed that over the previous two decades of U.S. elections, Donald Trump made contributions to campaigns of both Republican Party and Democratic Party candidates, with the top ten recipients of his political contributions being six Democrats and four Republicans. After 2011, his campaign contributions were more favorable to Republicans over Democrats. Trump was an early supporter of Republican Ronald Reagan for U.S. president, and in February 2012 endorsed Republican Mitt Romney for president. When asked in 2015 which recent president was best, Trump picked Democrat Bill Clinton over Republicans George H.W. Bush and George W. Bush. The Clintons Foundation has received between $100,000 and $250,000 from Trump, and they attended Trump's 2005 wedding reception. Trump wrote in 2008 that Hillary Clinton would be a great president or vice president. Trump's party affiliation has changed over the years. Until 1987, he was a Democrat. Then he was a Republican from 1987 to 1999. He then switched to the Reform Party from 1999 to 2001. From 2001 to 2009, he was a Democrat again, and switched to the Republican Party again from 2009 to 11. An independent from 2011 to 2012, he returned to the Republican Party, where he has remained from 2012 to the present. Presidential Leanings, 1988 to 2012 Trump floated the idea of running for president in 1988, 2004, and 2012, and for governor of New York in 2006 and 2014, but did not enter those races. He was considered as a potential running mate for George H. W. Bush on the Republican Party's 1988 presidential ticket, but lost out to future Vice President Dan Quayle. In 1999, Trump filed an exploratory committee to seek the presidential nomination of the Reform Party in 2000. A July 1999 poll matching him against likely Republican nominee George W. Bush and likely Democratic nominee Al Gore showed Trump with 7% support. Though he dropped out of the race due to party infighting, Trump still won the party's California and Michigan primaries. Trump later said that his national profile changed. What happened was I did The Apprentice and it became a tremendous success. Who would have thought this was going to happen? he told interviewer Larry King in 2005. There's sort of nothing like having the big hot show on television, Trump said. As Trump publicly speculated about seeking the 2012 Republican presidential nomination, a Wall Street Journal NBC News poll released in March 2011 found Trump leading among potential contenders, one point ahead of former Massachusetts Governor Mitt Romney. On May 16, 2011, Trump announced he would not run for president. Between Presidential Announcements, 2011-2015 to 2015. 
In December 2011, Donald Trump was named among the top six of the ten most admired men and women living, according to a USA Today Gallup poll. In April 2011, Trump questioned President Barack Obama's proof of citizenship, alleging that his grandmother in Kenya said he was born in Kenya, and she was there and witnessed the birth. Trump's claim derived from a discredited transcript of a telephone interview with Obama's grandmother, produced by a Pennsylvania pastor opposed to Obama's election. Trump also questioned whether Obama had good enough grades to warrant entry to Harvard Law School. Trump said to have sent a team of private investigators to Hawaii, Obama's documented birthplace, and told the Today Show they cannot believe what they're finding. On April 25, 2011, Trump called for Obama to end the citizenship issue by releasing the long form of his birth certificate. Two days later, Obama made a formal statement in efforts by the White House to put the matter to rest with the release of the long form of Obama's birth certificate. Trump expressed pride at his role in the certificate's release in a press conference follow-up, saying he hoped it checks out, and we have to see it. Is it real? When asked in July 2015 whether Obama was born in the U.S., Trump said, I really don't know. I mean, I don't know why he wouldn't release his records. In December 2008, Trump emerged as an early supporter of the 2009 government-backed rescue plan for the U.S. auto industry, which by 2012 was supported by 56% of Americans, according to a Pew Research Center poll. Statements of Trump's hinting that vaccination would cause autism were subject to criticism in various media by the scientific community. He has also been criticized for climate change-denying statements because they are discordant with the opinion of the scientific community. In 2013, Trump was a featured speaker at the Conservative Political Action Conference. The speech was not well attended. He spent over $1 million to research a possible run for president of the United States, in October 2013, New York Republicans had circulated a memo suggesting Trump should run for governor of the state in 2014 against Andrew Cuomo. Trump said that while New York had problems and taxes were too high, running for governor was not of great interest to him. In February 2015, Trump opted not to renew his television contract for The Apprentice, generating speculation that he might run for president in 2016. Part 6. 2016 Presidential Campaign Trump formally announced his candidacy for the presidency in the 2016 election on June 16, 2015. His announcement came at a campaign rally at Trump Tower in New York City. In the speech, Trump also pledged he would fund Social Security, renegotiate U.S. trade agreements, oppose federal Common Core education standards, and complete the United States-Mexico border fence and make Mexico pay for it. Trump said he would self-fund his presidential campaign and would not need to use money from donors and lobbyists. Trump has consistently had high poll numbers during his candidacy. A survey conducted by The Economist, released July 9, 2015, was the first major nationwide poll to show Trump as the 2016 Republican presidential frontrunner. Trump's populist and nativist politics brought him support among working-class voters and voters without college educations, amid heavy and frequent controversies in the news media. Trump's most polarizing and widely reported statements have been on issues of immigration and border security, with Trump proposing deportation of all illegal immigrants, a wall on the Mexican border, and a temporary ban on Muslims entering the U.S., while making inflammatory remarks pertaining to illegal immigrants that travel over the Mexican border to the U.S. Trump has gained widespread support for the idea that he and his supporters are telling it like it is, with a significant disdain for political correctness. He is running counter to the Republican establishment, which widely opposes his candidacy and worries that him winning could hand the election to the Democratic nominee. However, Trump's candidacy has largely succeeded, partly because of widespread media coverage. He has frequently made bold and controversial statements on issues that appeal to disenfranchised working-class voters with negative opinions of immigrants. Political opponents have described Trump as divisive, unserious, and a bully. Trump has made a number of high-profile personal attacks on journalists, politicians, and competing candidates. 
he often launches rapid, multi-tweet Twitter rants against people he disagrees with. A comprehensive encyclopedia of Trump's tweeted insults was published in the New York Times. Eschewing the super PAC model, popular among competing candidates, Trump has urged that the ability to self-finance his campaign, backed by considerable personal wealth due to him being a billionaire, is proof that he can't be bought. However, as of October 15, 2015, donations outpaced self-financing. Trump spends much less than competing candidates, relying on free media coverage instead of paid television advertisements. Trump's immigration policy calls for deportation of the 11 million illegal immigrants in the U.S. and the erection of a substantial wall on the Mexico-United States border. Felipe Calderon, former Mexican president, said, We are not going to pay any single cent for such a stupid wall, and it's going to be completely useless. Trump has called for aggressive bombing of the Mideast terrorist group ISIS and has supported surveillance of mosques in the U.S. Trump has employed strong rhetoric on religion. He has called for a ban on Muslims entering the United States, citing links between Muslims and terrorism. He has also raised questions about the general religious beliefs of other candidates, including Ben Carson and Ted Cruz. Other issues he highlights include taking care of military veterans, making the military strong, and getting trade agreements more favorable to American workers. Political Positions Trump has described his political leanings and positions in various, sometimes contradictory ways over time. The following are his positions as of 2016, as evidenced in his public speeches, debate appearances, policy briefs, and campaign website descriptions. Trump describes himself as pro-life and would ban late-term abortions except in cases of rape, incest, or health. He is in favor of cutting federal funding for Planned Parenthood. Trump supports the Second Amendment, is opposed to gun control in general, and has a New York concealed carry permit. He supports fixing the federal background check system so that criminal and mental health records are always put into the system. Regarding health care, Trump favors replacing the Affordable Care Act, commonly referred to as Obamacare, with a free market plan and competition to lower costs, although he has also stated support for a single-payer system in the past. Trump favors getting rid of backlogs and wait lists, which are the focus of the Veterans Health Administration scandal. He said he believes that Veterans Affairs facilities need to be upgraded with recent technology, hire more veterans to treat other veterans, increase support of female veterans, and create satellite clinics within hospitals in rural areas. Trump opposes legalizing recreational marijuana, but supports legalizing medical marijuana, while being supportive of states' rights. On the issue of immigration, Trump has emphasized U.S. border security. During his first town hall campaign meeting in Derry, New Hampshire, Trump claimed that if he won the election, day one of my presidency, illegal immigrants are getting out and getting out fast. Trump opposes birthright citizenship, arguing that it is not or should not be protected by the 14th Amendment to the United States Constitution. Trump has called global warming a total hoax. He has also stated that the concept of global warming was created by and for the Chinese in order to make U.S. manufacturing non-competitive, although he later clarified that this was a joke. He said that the EPA is an impediment to both growth and jobs. Trump supports increased fracking and has criticized sustainable wind power alternatives, stating that windmills are destroying every country they touch while producing unreliable and terrible energy. Trump has stated that he supports traditional marriage. Of the June 2015 Obergfell v. Hodges, the Supreme Court ruling legalizing same-sex marriage nationwide, he said, I would have preferred states, you know, making the decision, and I let that be known. But they made the decision, so at a certain point you have to be realistic about it. Regarding the minimum wage, Trump believes it should not be raised because increasing it would hurt America's economic competitiveness. Trump has stated his support for school choice and local control for primary and secondary schools. He opposes the Common Core State Standards Initiative for primary and secondary schools and has called Common Core a disaster that must be ended. Proposed Ban on Muslims Entering the U.S. Trump has received widespread notoriety for proposing a temporary ban on foreign Muslims entering the United States, Approximately 100,000 Muslim immigrants are admitted to the U.S. each year. 
until better security precautions are implemented. In response to the 2015 San Bernardino shooting, Trump released a statement on preventing Muslim immigration and called for total and complete shutdowns of Muslims entering the United States until our country's representatives can figure out what the hell is going on. Trump cited President Franklin Delano Roosevelt's World War II use of the Alien and Sedition Acts to issue presidential proclamations for rounding up, holding, and deporting Japanese, German, and Italian alien immigrants, then noted that Roosevelt was highly respected and had highways named after him. Trump stated that he did not agree with Roosevelt's internment of Japanese Americans and clarified that the proposal would not apply to Muslims who were U.S. citizens or to Muslims who were serving in the U.S. military. The measure proposed by Trump would be temporary until better screening methods are devised. This proposal gained considerable support among Republican voters, with 59% supporting such a ban in an ABC News Washington Post survey. Support for such a proposal comes to approximately 36% among the population as a whole. A large and diverse array of public figures have condemned Trump's comments. The proposal drew widespread criticism from sources both within the U.S. and abroad. Critics included British Prime Minister David Cameron, French Prime Minister Manuel Valls, and Canadian Foreign Minister Stéphane Dion, as well as the chairman of the Republican Party, Reince Priebus, Republican House Speaker Paul Ryan, and Republican Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell. A petition to block Trump from entry into the United Kingdom has gained over 540,000 signatures, a record for the UK government website. Members of Trump's own party argued that a proposal banning members of a major world religion violated the party's conservative values, the Constitution's First Amendment, which grants freedom of religion, and the country's immigrant heritage. Critics pointed out that the proposal would result in the exclusion of many of the most important allies in the country's war on terror, from interpreters helping the CIA to Jordan's King Abdullah, and that it would bolster ISIS by furthering its narrative that the U.S. is pitted against the Muslim faith. The U.S. Pentagon issued a statement that anything that bolsters ISIL's narrative and pits the United States against the Muslim faith is certainly not only contrary to our values, but contrary to our national security. In January 2013, Trump had been a popular figure in Israel, who has himself owned land in Israel. Trump released a video endorsing Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu during the 2013 Israeli elections. However, after Trump's December 2015 call to temporarily exclude Muslims from travel to the United States, numerous Jewish leaders, including Netanyahu, criticized Trump's proposal. A day later, Trump postponed his visit to Israel until, quote, a later date after I become president of the U.S., stating that he did not want to put Netanyahu under pressure. Part 7. Personal Life. Marriages. Trump has had three marriages, which have been well documented in the tabloid media. His personal life has gained extensive media coverage. Trump married model Ivana Zelnikova on April 7, 1977, at the Marble Collegiate Church in New York. They have three children, sons Donald Jr., born December 31, 1977, and Eric, born January 6, 1984, and daughter Ivanka, born October 30, 1981. Ivana became a naturalized U.S. citizen in 1988, with Trump at her side. Trump is popularly known as The Donald, a nickname perpetuated by the media after Ivana referred to him as such in a 1989 spy magazine cover story. By 1990, Trump's troubled marriage to Ivana and long-running affair with actress Marla Maples had become widely documented in the tabloid press, and the couple divorced in 1991. Maples gave birth to their daughter, Tiffany, on October 13, 1993, they married two months later on December 20, 1993. The couple formally separated in May 1997, with their divorce finalized in June 1999. Trump dated model Cara Young in the mid to late 1990s and reportedly bombarded Princess Diana with expensive floral arrangements after her 1996 divorce from Prince Charles. I only have one regret in the women department, that I never had the opportunity to court Lady Diana Spencer. Trump wrote in his 1997 book, The Art of the Comeback. I met her on a number of occasions. She was a genuine princess, a dream lady. 
In 1998, Trump began a relationship with Slovenian-born fashion model Milenia Noss. They became engaged in April 2004 and were married on January 22, 2005 at Bethesda-by-the-Sea Episcopal Church on the island of Palm Beach, Florida, followed by a reception at Trump's Mar-a-Lago estate. In 2006, Melania became a naturalized U.S. citizen. That same year, she gave birth to a son named Baron William Trump. Having spoken the language since his childhood, Baron is fluent in Slovenian. In a February 2009 interview on ABC's news program Nightline, Trump commented on his ex-wives. I just know it's very hard for them to compete because I do love what I do. I really love it. Trump has eight grandchildren, five from his son Donald Jr., and three from his daughter Ivanka. Religious Views Trump is a Presbyterian. In a 2011 interview on the 700 Club, he commented, I'm a Protestant, I'm a Presbyterian, and you know, I've had a good relationship with the Church over the years. I think religion is a wonderful thing. I think my religion is a wonderful religion. Trump told a 2015 South Carolina campaign audience he joined the Marble Collegiate Church, where he married his first wife Ivana in 1977. The church has said he is not an active member. In 1983, the Reverend Norman Vincent Peale, described in a New York Times profile as Trump's pastor and family minister, said that Trump was kindly and courteous in certain business negotiations and has a profound streak of honest humility. Trump calls his own book, The Art of the Deal, my second favorite book of all time, and has told campaign audiences, you know what my first is? The Bible. Nothing beats the Bible. Trump has said that while he participates in Holy Communion, he has not asked God for forgiveness for his sins. He says, I think if I do something wrong, I think I just try to make it right. I don't bring God into that picture. Trump has praised and maintains relationships with several prominent national evangelical and Christian leaders, including Tony Perkins and Ralph Reed. During his 2016 presidential campaign, he received a blessing from Greek Orthodox priest Emmanuel Lemelson. Trump also has strong ties with the Jewish American community. Asked in 2015 at an Alga Minor Journal Awards ceremony about having Jewish grandchildren, Trump said, Not only do I have Jewish grandchildren, I have a Jewish daughter. Ivanka, who converted to Judaism after her marriage to Jared Kushner. And I'm very honored by that. It wasn't in the plan, but I'm very glad it happened. Hairstyle Trump's hairstyle has been widely examined and is often fodder for comedic remarks. His hair is notorious for its uniquely dynamic shape, sand-yellow-white color, and what Vanity Fair has described as an unusual two-directional double comb-over, which is made particularly visible in harsh lighting. Louis Lacari has conjectured that it is all Trump's hair, but only through transplants, possibly performed by hair transplantation pioneer Norman Orentreich. In June 2015, Trump told the Des Moines Register he would probably change his current hairstyle if elected U.S. president in 2016, saying he would not have time to maintain it as he would be working his butt off in the White House. Part 8. Legal Affairs Corporate Bankruptcies Four of Trump's businesses have declared Chapter 11 bankruptcy. According to a report by Forbes in 2011, These were the result of over-leveraged hotel and casino businesses in Atlantic City. Trump's Taj Mahal, Trump's Plaza Hotel, Trump's Hotels and Casino Resorts, and Trump Entertainment Resorts. Trump said, I've used the laws of the country to pare debt. We'll have the company. We'll throw it into a chapter. We'll negotiate with the banks. We'll make a fantastic deal. You know, it's like on The Apprentice. It's not personal. It's just business. He indicated that other great entrepreneurs do the same. Lawsuits Over the course of his career, Trump has initiated and been the target of, quote, hundreds of civil lawsuits, which his lawyer Alan Garten said in 2015 was, quote, a natural part of doing business in this country. In 1973, the Justice Department filed suit against the Trump Management Corporation for alleged racial discrimination, which Trump's company disputed. The case was settled out of court in 1975. In 1990, after an analyst at Janney Montgomery Scott said that Trump's Taj Mahal project would initially break records but would fail before the end of that year, 
Trump threatened to sue the firm unless the analyst recanted or was fired. The analyst refused to retract the statements and was fired by his firm. In 2002, the Securities and Exchange Commission brought a financial reporting case against Trump Hotels and Casino Resorts, Incorporated, alleging that it had committed several misleading statements in the company's third quarter 1999 earnings release. The matter was settled with the defendant neither admitting nor denying the charge. During the 2008 financial crisis, Trump International Hotel and Tower in Chicago was unable to sell sufficient units. Lender Deutsche Bank refused to let Trump lower the prices on the units to spur sales. Trump then initiated a suit asserting that his image had been damaged. Both parties agreed to drop their suits, and sales of the units continued. In 2008, Trump filed a $100 million lawsuit for alleged fraud and civil rights violations against the California city of Rancho Palos Verdes, a seaside town of 41,000 with an annual budget just under $20 million, over thwarted luxury home development and expansion plans on part of a landslide-prone golf course purchased by Trump in 2002 for $27 million. In 2009, Trump was sued by investors who had put down deposits, typically $200,000 to $300,000 per person, for condos in the failed Trump Ocean Resort, Baja, Mexico. The investors alleged that Trump, whose videos promoting the development had been shown to potential investors, misrepresented his role in the project, stating after its failure that he had been little more than a spokesperson for the entire venture, disavowing any financial responsibility for the debacle. In 2013, Trump settled the lawsuit with more than 100 would-be condo owners for an undisclosed amount. Trump sued comedian Bill Maher for $5 million in 2013, when in which Mayer appeared on The Tonight Show with Jay Leno and offered $5 million payable to a charity if Trump produced his birth certificate to prove his mother had not mated with an orangutan. Trump withdrew his lawsuit against the comedian after eight weeks. In 2013, a lawsuit filed by New York Attorney General Eric Schneiderman accused Trump of defrauding more than 5,000 people of $40 million for the opportunity to learn Trump's real estate investment techniques in a for-profit training program, Trump University, which operated from 2005 to 2011. Schneiderman contended that Trump's seminars constituted an unlicensed illegal educational institution, which utilized false advertising, bait-and-switch tactics, intentional misrepresentation, and other fraudulent practices. In January 2014, a New York Superior Court upheld part of the Attorney General's case against Trump, and in October 2014, found Trump liable for not obtaining a license to operate the for-profit investment school, Trump University. In 2015, Trump initiated a $100 million lawsuit against Palm Beach County, claiming that officials, in a deliberate and malicious act, pressured the FAA to direct air traffic to the Palm Beach International Airport over his Mar-a-Lago estate. The air traffic was allegedly damaging the construction of the building and disrupting its ambience. Allegations of Business with Firms Linked to Organized Crime Pulitzer Prize-winning journalist David K. Johnston, as well as investigative journalist Wayne Barrett, who wrote an unauthorized 1992 Trump biography, have alleged that Trump and his companies did business with the New York and Philadelphia families linked to the Italian-American mafia. According to the Washington Post, he was never accused of illegality, and observers of the time say that working with the mob-related figures and politicos came with the territory. Campaign Contributions According to a New York State report, Trump circumvented personal and corporate campaign donation limits in the 1980s by donating money to candidates from 18 different business subsidiaries rather than giving primarily in his own name. Trump told investigators he did so on the advice of lawyers and not to curry favor with business-friendly candidates, but simply to satisfy requests from friends. 